What is this evil eye? What is Al Ain? Is it a reality? Is it superstition? Well, uh, the Prophet ﷺ has said in authentic hadith, Al Ainu Haq. Al Ainu Haq. That the evil eye is true. Al Ainu Haq. The evil eye is true. And uh, this story of Yaqub as well proves it that there is a reason why he does not want his 11 children to enter together. Why? All of these are sons. And for one man to have 11 sons is a big blessing and honor, especially at that time. Especially at that time when sons are of great value. So these are all full brothers. Not only that, they are all the children of Yaqub and they're all very handsome. Right? Yeah, they're all very handsome and they're all from a foreign race. Uh, uh, that is a race of the uh, Bani Israel. It's a new race now. The race is just starting now, the Bani Israel, right? The Israel is Yaqub. So this is a new race that is starting, a new ethnicity. And they are, mashallah, young, powerful, strong men. Who's not going to get jealous amongst the people of Egypt when they find this new race and they're all speaking a, a language, looking different, dressing differently. So he's worried about Ain. What exactly is Ain? There's only like five or six a hadith about Ain. And there's indirect references in the Quran to Ain. Uh, and put together, we as Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'a believe that there is a reality called Ain. Some of the progressives or modernists, they don't like anything that their mind doesn't understand, so they deny it. But Ain seems to be very true and real from the Quran and from the Sunnah. As from the Quran, we have a clear verse in the Quran that we seek refuge. وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا hasad, Right? And if the hasad of the hasid had no effect, why should we care about seeking Allah's refuge in it? Let me repeat. The very fact that we seek Allah's refuge from the evil of the hasid when he has hasad shows us that when a person is jealous, hasad means a burning jealousy. When a person is jealous, there is an evil that will affect. So what is al ain? Al ain is the negative consequences of jealousy. The negative consequences of jealousy. And it is called ain from the eyes. Because the number one reason to get jealous is when you look at something. But Ain has nothing to do with the eyes. Because you can hear about something and get jealous. You don't have to necessarily look at it. It's not like an invisible uh, uh, Superman beam of ray that comes out. right? This is not Al Ain. Okay? Al Ain is the feeling of the heart. Al Ain is a burning jealousy. And it has to be a burning jealousy. This is a jealousy that only an evil person allows this jealousy to go unchecked. Because the Prophet ﷺ said that jealousy destroys good deeds, like a fire destroys twigs, or like, uh, or like that herb destroys honey. Uh, the, I forgot the herb, but the, some type of herb destroys honey. It, it makes it corrupt, right? So jealousy destroys hasanat. The mu'min will never allow the jealousy to go unchecked. Because jealousy is a filthy feeling. That even when you feel jealous, you feel filthy. Why am I feeling like this? Jealousy is a filthy feeling. And it's only the evil person who allows jealousy to go unchecked. And what happens when you allow jealousy to go unchecked? Somehow, it causes an effect on the object of jealousy. How? Scholars have differed. As I said, the evidences are very little about Ain. But one hadith seems to suggest that that jealousy empowers shaitan. It gives some type of fuel to shaitan. And shaitan can then use that because shaitan wants to harm. Shaitan can then use that fuel to get to the other person. And this seems to be uh, the, the, the most logical, rational, and also hadithi interpretation. That how can just jealousy affect somebody? How can it do it by, by that? Well, it could if Allah has decreed. We're not denying that. But it seems, and there are riwayat that show this, that jealousy feeds shaitan. And, and the jinn basically, when the shay I say shaitan, I mean the jinn, the evil shaitan, the evil jinn, the shayateen. And when you have so much jealousy, then you basically empower some of the jinns to go and harm the other person. It gives them the motivation, it gives them the fuel they need to go and harm the other person. So, the Prophet wasallam in an authentic hadith in Sahih Bukhari, and this is one of the most authentic hadith about Ain, he would seek refuge in Allah from the Ain. He would seek refuge in Allah from the Ain. This hadith is in Bukhari. And so he would say, and the dua is in Bukhari, Allahumma inni a'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tam. 
I seek refuge in the perfect uh, speech of Allah. Min kulli shaytanin wahamma. From every shaytan and from every uh, creature that harms. Hamma is like a scorpion, a snake, right? Min kulli shaytan wahamma. Wa min kulli ayni lamma. And from every critical or jealous eye. Once again, the hadith. Allahumma inni a'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tamma. Min kulli shaytanin wahamma. Wa min kulli aynin lamma. So three things are being sought refuge in. Shaytan and creatures. Now, of course, in the desert, creatures, of course, we still seek refuge here. But I'm saying, in those days, you're worried about scorpions, you're worried about snakes, you're about all of these animals. And that's uh, ham. And wa min kulli aynin lamma. And from every ayn that will criticize, that will be jealous. So the Prophet is seeking refuge in al ayn. And in a hadith in Abu Dawud and um, Ahmad, Imam Ahmad Musad, he said, Al ayn haq. Ayn is true, it's a reality. So I think two words is a hadith. Al ayn haq. Don't deny it, it's not superstition, is the point. It's a reality. Al ayn haq. So we believe in ayn. How do we protect ourselves from ayn? Uh, again, this is a different topic, but it is important. So four things. Four things to protect ourselves from Ayn. The first one I've already mentioned. What is that? Dua. Dua. What duas are there? Well, I just told you two duas. Right? Extra recitation of Surah Falaq. And also, this particular dua of Sahih al-Bukhari. So, from the Quran, from the Sunnah, we always regularly seek protection from Ayn. Number two, what else can we learn right now? We've already, there's a lesson right here. What should we do to protect ourselves from Ayn? Don't be flashy. Right? Don't be flashy. Don't want to show off what Allah has blessed you with. Be cautious. No point. You're going to cause yourself harm. The mu'min is not to show off, right? Now the mu'min might have a lot of blessings. Eleven sons are blessings, right? If you have wealth, alhamdulillah, live the lifestyle that's halal, alhamdulillah. But there's no point flaunting it, right? There's no point making people feel jealous of it. When you do so, not only if you do it intentionally, you are under sin, right? If you do it intentionally, you are sinful. And whether you do it intentionally or not, you will bring about people's jealousy. And there's no point doing that. So the second thing is to take reasonable uh, precautions. That's, uh, uh, now, even though, of course, taking reasonable precautions will not guarantee protection from Ayn. Because even Yaqub says, Wala Allah. This is not going to protect you against Allah. I do what I can, but it's not going to protect you completely. The third thing uh, is that if you yourself feel jealous, if you yourself feel the beginnings of jealousy, get rid of that jealousy by making dua upon the one whom you feel jealous for. And the best dua that the scholars say is, Masha Allah, Tabarakallah. Right? And the evidence for this is Surah Al Kahf and the people of the two gardens. Right? Uh, that the evidence that they say from this is Surah Al Kahf. That don't, now this man, he was feeling ujub, not, not ayn, but nonetheless, it's, it's the parallel, it's the companion. He's feeling proud. He's feeling, oh, mashallah, I got all of this stuff, man, it's all mine. No, don't say it's all mine. Mashallah, la quwwata illa billah. Take it, give it back to Allah, right? La quwwata illa billah. So when we feel jealous, and subhanallah, who amongst us cannot have some fleeting, fleeting jealousy? We see somebody, uh, MashaAllah, wealthy, or uh, driving that uh, fancy car, or living in that uh, mansion, right? Or primarily for the sisters, it's about beauty, that's what they get jealous for, right? They see, or a good marriage as well, somebody who's happily married. Yani, it's something, human nature, that a fleeting emotion runs by your heart. The mu'min seeks refuge, kills that. And if it doesn't go away, MashaAllah, MashaAllah, la quwwata illa billah. Make dua for the person. And the scholars say, by the way, the scholars say that whoever causes Ayn will be accountable on the Day of Judgment. Because you allowed the Hasad to grow, right? And the Prophet ﷺ said that 
Hasad eats up your good deeds if you let it grow. So don't think that just because you have Ain, uh, you know, it's just a feeling in the heart. No. Uh, some feelings of the heart are accountable by Allah, and this is one of them. I'm going into the tension of Ain because I know it's something everybody has questions about and you rarely f hear people talking about it. So I'm going a little bit of a tangent, I know uh, this was intentional, it's not one of my unintended tangents uh, uh, about this topic. So, uh, al ain as we said, the person who has it will be sinful on the Day of Judgment. Because he allowed the jealousy to grow. And generally speaking, fleeting jealousy does not cause ain. It is sustained jealousy. It is jealousy that grows days and months and years. And wallahi, only a filthy heart can allow this jealousy to grow. Only a filthy heart. And when it grows and it becomes so corrupt and wicked, somehow the shayateen seem to get some power and they love, then they can just, they're, they're fueled. Allah knows their world, how it works. But they seem to be fueled by that energy and power and it gives them uh, uh, the, the symptoms. What happens? Well, the exact opposite of what you were jealous of. Um, of not sorry, of what caused the jealousy. So, if uh, a person is beautiful and others get jealous of, uh, of her, then she might start having blemishes, warts, spots on her face, right? Or uh, the fancy car, you're driving your fancy, let's say, Jaguar or something, right? You're zooming through the streets and all the men are getting jealous of a, of a car. Uh, so childish, but anyway. So, they're getting jealous of the fancy car going there. They might get into an accident might get into a serious problem, completely uh, totaled, because of the hasad, because of the ayn. So whatever was the cause of that jealousy, it will impact and harm it. So much so that according to one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, hasad and ayn can even cause a man to go to the grave, can even cause death. So hadith in Abu Dawud, that it's something that is very dangerous. It can cause uh, death if it's allowed to go unchecked. So these are three things we said. The fourth thing is a little bit uh, confusing the first time you hear it. And that is, if you know who caused the jealousy, if you know who caused the jealousy, and there are symptoms and signs that the people who do ruqya uh, can tell and you sometimes see it in a dream as well that if you make dua to Allah to show you you will see the person in the dream doing something to harm you over and over again and so it is a message from Allah that this is the one doing it uh, and this person is a Muslim then you go to this person and you say and this is confusing to those who are hearing it for the first time give me the remnants of your wudu what this means is, and this is from a hadith in, uh, in um, Imam Ahmad's Musnad, and I want to say Tirmidhi, but for sure it's in Imam Ahmad's Musnad, and it's authentic. That the Prophet ﷺ saw somebody suffering from hasad, sorry, suffering from ayn, the effects of ayn. And he said, did anything happen to him? So they said, yes, so and so passed by, and he seemed to be impressed, he seemed to be amazed. And ever since that, he had been suffering from sickness. So the Prophet said, call that man, call the first one. So they called him and he commanded him to do wudu in front of him. And so he did wudu into the container. Now in those days, you know, the water doesn't run into the sink, the water remains. So you do wudu and the water goes into the container. So he said, take this and tell the other person, the one who's suffering, to bathe in it, to put it on his body. And by Doing that, he immediately became pure again. And that is because wudu is a blessing. And wudu takes away evil, right? And wudu causes sins and what not to go away. So the Prophet ﷺ told the first one basically to repent, to get over this, right? So, I mean, he didn't say this in the hadith, but that's the meaning, is that you're the one who caused this, right? So the man should feel some guilt, the man should basically do wudu in a repentant state. And what does wudu do? Wudu removes the evil. Wudu is a cleansing mechanism. Wudu brightens the person. So it gets rid of the evil and we can then imagine that that is now in the water, whatever was there. So we just have to give the water to the person and the uh, ayn goes away. But this can only be done if you know who did it and he's accessible and he's willing to do this for you, right? And only a practicing Muslim uh, would be able to, uh, to do that. So these are the four things that we can do for, for ayn. And of course the point being, we do our precautions, what we can, and in the end, as Yaqub said, getting back to the story, وَلَا أُغْنِ عَنْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْءٍ I cannot protect you against Allah at all. إِنِ الْحُكْمُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ Ruling and judgment belongs to Allah. Allah judges and decides what's going to happen, not me. If Allah wants to cause a, a, any type of harm, I'm not going to come between that. 
I cannot protect you. In al hukmu illa lillah. The judgment belongs to Allah. Alayhi tawakkalt. All I can do is put my trust in Him. Wa alayhi fal yatawakkalil mutawakkilun. And let all of those who put their trust put it in Allah and not in other people. Don't put your trust in your tactics, in what I'm telling you. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.